people to use him. No. I am the father. In a galaxy far, far away, the Force has been forever altered. The deep, resonant voice that once declared, I am your father, has fallen silent. James Earl Jones, the legendary actor whose commanding presence breathed life into Darth Vader, has passed away at age 93. In this video, we'll explore his prolific career, from his humble beginnings in Mississippi to his rise as one of the most respected actors of his generation, and whose final days reminded us that even the brightest stars eventually fade. Early life. And he just decided, because his, his wife, my grandmother, wanted to get out of Michigan, get out of Mississippi, just pack up and leave during uh -huh. the Depression. And we did that by train. James Earl Jones was born January 17, 1931, in Arkabutlam, Mississippi. At age five, he moved to Michigan to live with his maternal grandparents, a transition that proved traumatic and contributed to the development of a severe stutter. This speech impediment was so profound, Jones became virtually mute for eight years. The turning point came during his high school years at Brethren High School in Manistee County, Michigan. His English teacher, Donald Crouch, recognized Jones's talent for writing and encouraged him to read his poetry aloud in class. This innovative approach proved transformative, helping Jones manage his stutter and igniting a passion for language and performance. After high school, he enrolled at the University of Michigan as a pre-med student. But his experiences in the university's ROTC program and a brief stint in the U.S. Army led him to reconsider his career path. He graduated in 1955 with a Bachelor of Arts degree in drama. His rise to theatrical prominence. How come you ain't never liked me? Liked you? Who in the hell ever said, I got to like you? What law is there to say, I got to like you? Do you want to stand up in my face and ask me some damn Fool ass question like that. Talk about liking somebody. Come here, boy, when I talk to you. James Earl Jones's acting career began on the stages of Michigan. After his military service, he worked at the Ramsdell Theater in Manistee, where he honed his craft as both an actor and stage manager. His first significant role was portraying Othello, a character he would revisit throughout his career. In 1957, Jones made his Broadway debut in The Egghead by Molly Kazan. Although short-lived, it marked the beginning of his long and successful career on the Great White Way. Throughout the 60s, Jones established himself as one of the preeminent Shakespearean actors of his time, tackling challenging roles such as Othello, King Lear, and Claudius in Hamlet. The pivotal moment in his theatrical career came in 1968 with his portrayal of boxer Jack Jefferson in The Great White Hope. The play was a monumental success, winning the Pulitzer Prize for drama. Jones won the 1969 Tony Award for Best Actor in a Play and the Drama Desk Award. He continued excelling on stage, winning his second Tony for Best Actor in a Play in 1987 for his role as Troy Maxson in August Wilson's Fences. Throughout his career, he returned to the stage repeatedly, taking on challenging roles in productions like On Golden Pond, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, and you can't take it with you. His dedication to theater earned him a special Tony Award for Lifetime Achievement in 2017. Conquering Hollywood. The fact that George Lucas chose your voice. That's an accident. You don't mind the accident now, looking back, right? Oh, no, oh, no, I'm, I'm very proud to, be, to have been a part of that. The boy born in Mississippi and who grew up on a farm in Michigan ended up being the voice. And who was a stutterer. And yeah. Who, and who was a stutterer. That, that's his Darth Vader. While Jones had made a name for himself on stage, his transition to film and television elevated him to global recognition. He made his film debut in Stanley Kubrick's 1964 satirical masterpiece, Dr. Strangelove, playing Lieutenant Lothar Zog, a small but memorable role. In 1970, he reprised his stage role as Jack Jefferson in the film adaptation of The Great White Hope. 
The performance earned him Academy Award and Golden Globe nominations for Best Actor, making him only the second African-American male performer after Sidney Poitier to be nominated for the Best Actor Oscar. But it was in 1977 that Jones took on the role that forever changed his career and cemented his place in pop culture history. George Lucas cast him as the voice of Darth Vader in Star Wars A New Hope. Jones's deep, resonant voice brought an unforgettable menace to the iconic villain, creating one of the most recognizable vocal performances in cinema history. He would reprise this role in the sequels, The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, as well as in later Star Wars productions. Interestingly, Jones was initially uncredited for his role, considering his contribution as merely special effects. Throughout the 80s and 90s, Jones appeared in a string of successful films. He starred as the imposing Thulsa Doom in Conan the Barbarian, brought regality and humor to his role as King Jaffe Joffer in Coming to America, and added gravitas to the mystical field of dreams. In 1994, he lent his distinctive voice to another iconic character, voicing Mufasa in Disney's animated classic The Lion King, a role that introduced him to a new legion of fans. Jones's success wasn't limited to the big screen. He found equal acclaim on television, winning two Primetime Emmy Awards in 1991 for his roles in Gabriel's Fire and Heat Wave. He also played memorable guest roles on popular series like Frasier and Two and a Half Men. In a unique and powerful project, Jones lent his iconic voice to a complete audio recording of the New Testament of the King James Bible. This endeavor, which spanned over 19 hours and was released on both cassette and CD, allowed listeners to experience the scriptures as narrated by one of the most recognizable voices in entertainment. Later Career Introducing the Variations Freedom Package from Verizon. Go ahead, nothing stopping you. Make all the calls you want. As James Earl Jones entered the latter stages of his career, he showed no signs of slowing down. He continued to take on challenging roles and expand his body of work. In the 2000s and 2010s, he remained a formidable presence on both stage and screen. On Broadway, he continued to tackle complex and demanding roles that showcased his enduring power as a performer. In 2005, he starred opposite Leslie Uggams in an African-American production of On Golden Pond. In 2008, he took on the iconic role of Big Daddy in an all-African-American production of Tennessee Williams' Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, directed by Debbie Allen. In 2010, he returned to Broadway in Alfred Urey's Driving Miss Daisy, starring alongside Vanessa Redgrave. The play was so successful, it transferred to London's West End in 2011. During this run, Jones received an honorary Oscar, presented to him by Ben Kingsley in front of the audience at the Wyndham's Theater. His voice work continued to be in high demand into his 80s and 90s. He reprised his role as Mufasa in the 2019 CGI rehash of The Lion King, directed by Jon Favreau. He also became known for his distinctive voiceover work in commercials and promotions. He was the longtime voice of CNN's tagline, This is CNN, a phrase that became inextricably linked with his rich baritone. He also lent his voice to numerous commercial campaigns, making his voice one of the most recognizable in media. Final years. I'm going to die now. Oh, yes, he is. Come now, Father. Everything is going to. Wow. Oh, please don't leave us. Take us. James Earl Jones's later years were marked by both personal loss and continued artistic achievements. In 2016, he faced a profound personal tragedy when his wife of 34 years, Cecilia Hart, passed away from ovarian cancer. Despite this personal hardship, he continued to work selectively. In 2021, at age 90, he reprised his role as King Jaffe Joffer in Coming to America, his final on-screen appearance. In 2022, he participated in the Disney Plus miniseries Obi-Wan Kenobi, allowing his voice to be used via AI technology to recreate the sound of Darth Vader. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Kana Whitworth, and we are coming on the air right now because ABC News has just learned that legendary actor James Earl Jones has died. On September 9th, 2024, James Earl Jones passed away at his home in Pauling, New York, at age 93. While he was surrounded by his family in his final moments, his passing marked the end of a period where he had lived without his longtime partner. 
His legacy is multifaceted and profound. As an actor, he broke barriers and set new standards of excellence. He was one of the first African-American actors to achieve widespread recognition and acclaim in classical theatrical roles, paving the way for future generations of performers. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of James Earl Jones? What's your favorite performance of his? Let us know in the comments section below.